good afternoon my dear students today we'll talk about two small topics the deltoid and the axillary nerve why i am taking both these topics together because the deltoid muscle is a very important muscle here which is very important very frequently asked in the exam and the nerve supply of that muscle is the axillary nerve both are very small topics will be asked as short notes in the exam but before i start my topic again uh, i don't know the shoulder joint part 2 video was posted yesterday but then uh, shoulder joint part 1 got good likes but shoulder joint part 2 has not received that much views and likes please see to it that these videos are beneficial to you and you watch those videos your exam is coming near i am trying to help you in with this videos in your exam so if please try to view those videos and try to like my videos uh, as far as possible okay so we'll start with the topic of today so the topic of today is deltoid and axillary nerve now as we have seen few muscles in the past few videos deltoid is a muscle a very important muscle of the upper limb of the arm rather or to be very specific of the scapular region and this muscle is a, you can understand the importance of this muscle ki this muscle is involved in almost all the action of the shoulder joint except one action that is adduction because when you have seen the shoulder joint movements you have seen flexion extension abduction adduction all those actions will be done by somewhere deltoid will be involved in that and that is why it's a very important muscle and in nowadays today's scenario all of us are seeing being by people being vaccinated and people get vaccinated by getting their injection to dose in the deltoid muscle itself so that is why that is the importance of this muscle a very very important muscle it gives a beautiful look to the shoulder the rounded contour of the shoulder becomes comes because of the deltoid so coming back to the anatomy of the deltoid because this is a muscle you will have to study it under four headings origin insertion nerve supply and action now uh, when you talk about a deltoid there are three fibers of the deltoid the anterior fibers the posterior fibers and the lateral fibers or they are also called as the middle fibers remember the muscle as i am talking because to remember the actions this is going to be very helpful so anterior fibers of the deltoid here posterior fibers of the deltoid and you will have the middle fibers or they are also called as the acromial fibers so these are the three fibers and these three fibers originate from three different things anterior fibers of the deltoid you can see this this whole muscle is going to be deltoid anterior fibers of the deltoid are going to arise from the anterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle anterior border of lateral one third of the clavicle posterior fibers and middle fibers are in continuation when you draw the scapula like this if this is the spine of the scapula the spine of the scapula continues as acromion process so if the <coughs> if you want to understand the posterior fibers it is coming from lower lip of the crest of the spine of the scapula and this is going to continue as lateral border of the acromion okay so that is how you have to understand this okay so if this is the scapula like this so the lower lip of the spine of the scapula and lateral border of the acromion this will be the posterior fibers these will be the lateral fibers okay so here lower lip of the crest of the spine of the scapula and lateral border of the acromion this is the uh, origin of the deltoid so i will again repeat the origin of the deltoid anterior fibers arise from the lateral uh, anterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle posterior fibers arise from the lower lip of the crest of the spine of the scapula and the lateral fibers or acromion fibers arise from the lateral border of the acromion so that is the origin the muscle is inserted here the or it is inserted into the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus all of us have seen the humerus there is in the somewhere here in the middle you will have the deltoid tuberosity it's a v shaped deltoid tuberosity where that muscle is going to be inserted and then you have next point is the nerve supply the nerve supply of the muscle is the axillary nerve okay the axillary nerve is going to supply the deltoid and uh, so anterior division of the axillary nerve is going to supply deltoid so that is very specific now actions actions of the deltoid as i told you it will do all the actions of the shoulder joint except one action that is adduction so to remember the action you will have to remember the fibers as i told you the anterior fibers of the deltoid are going to do flexion and medial rotation okay exactly opposite will be the action of posterior fibers they will do extension and lateral rotation of the shoulder joint and these fibers which are there the acromion fibers are going to help in abduction of the arm from 15 to 90 degrees to be very clear some books say that it is helping in abduction of the arm from 0 to 90 degrees still here that is going to be the action of the deltoid now 
there are so this is about the deltoid the muscle as per meaning anatomy of the muscle origin insertion or cephal action now when this muscle is going to be there as a short term this is superficial muscle of the uh, scapular region or the shoulder region and therefore one more point comes in the answer that is what are the structures which are under the cover of the deltoid now you have a list of structures which is given in the books you will have bones which are under the cover of deltoid muscles which are under the cover of deltoid nerves vessels likewise you will have that st uh, structures which come under the cover of deltoid now if you observe this way how the muscle comes you will understand that the deltoid is going to cover the humerus the the humerus it is going to cover the clavicle it is going to cover the scapula it is going to cover the uh, acromioclavicular joint it is going to cover the shoulder joint how you will remember the major structures so these are the some important muscles and bones which are there but when you are going to talk about the muscles which are under the cover of the deltoid you will remember that this is going to cover the upper part upper end of the humerus so what is there important at the upper end of the humerus you will have lesser tubercle greater tubercle intertubercular sulcus so you will have to understand the muscles that are going to be uh, attached there you will have subscapularis supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor pectoralis major latissimus dorsi and teres pes these are the muscles which are attached at the upper end of the humerus it also covers the supraspinous fossa and also some part of the infraspinous fossa as so it will cover some part of supraspinatus and also the infraspinatus again and then it will also cover the subacromial bursa so and if you talk about the nerve which is under the cover of the deltoid you will have the axillary nerve that is going to come under the cover of the deltoid the nerve which supplies the deltoid and the vessels which are there you will have anterior circumflex humeral artery and posterior circumflex humeral artery so these are the important structures you can list them as bones muscles then vessels nerves joints okay so that is a list of structures which will be under the cover of the deltoid and last part of the answer is applied anatomy as i have discussed two important applied anatomy things firstly that when you are going to give injections here in the deltoid intramuscular injections in the deltoid are given at the insertion of the deltoid this has to be observed carefully because if you give somewhere at the higher part then you have a risk of damaging the axillary nerve which is there at the surgical neck of the humerus and if the axillary nerve is damaged then it can lead to paralysis of the deltoid which can result in a lo uh, hampering a lo lot of movements of the shoulder joint okay and then uh, the other thing is that it gives a rounded contour of the shoulder if there is a paralysis of the deltoid by in uh, involvement of the axillary nerve then the contour of the shoulder is not round contour of the shoulder is not the shoulder will become Uh, somewhat rectangular or squarish type of thing okay so that is the importance of the deltoid and its anatomy now we we'll go to the next short topic that is the axillary nerve okay now axillary nerve like all other nerves you are going to understand under those four points which we have talked of first is what origin and root value second point is force and relations third point will be branches and fourth point will be applied anatomy okay one point which you have to add when you are going to talk about nerves of the upper limb is which cord of brachial plexus which cord of brachial plexus does it come from so these are the four points on which you are going to study the axillary nerve it's a very short nerve but a very important nerve okay axillary nerve is also called as circumflex nerve okay now first point is what is the origin and root value it arises from c8 and t1 or roots the root value will be c8 and t1 and it is going to arise from the posterior cord of brachial plexus okay it arises from the posterior cord of brachial plexus okay now when you know this there is one sentence which can come automatically that when you are going to come this nerve is going to come into the axilla and then it is going to go ahead okay i will talk about how the course of the nerve is if you remember one topic which we had taken earlier we had talked of triangular and quadrangular spaces and the axillary nerve you should remember that its final destination is going to be here in the quadrangular space okay the axillary nerve is going to be in the quadrangular space it's the content of the quadrangular space where it is accompanied by posterior circumflex humeral vessel that is what you should understand it is going to come here finally and then it is going to supply the two muscles there it is going to supply deltoid and teres minor okay so we we'll start the course the first first point of the course is that it arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus then it will come into the axilla 
what sentence will come here now because it comes from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus it is posterior to the third part of the axillary artery it will leave the axilla and then enters it leaves the axilla and enters the quadrangular space in the quadrangular space it is going to wind around the surgical neck of the humerus and is accompanied by posterior circumflex humerus and it reaches the deltoid it reaches the in the quadrangular space it is going to divide into two divisions the anterior division and the posterior division the anterior division supplies deltoid and the skin over the lateral aspect of the uh, arm here and the posterior division supplies the second muscle that is teres minor and finishes as a pseudo ganglia okay so that is a course very simple course short course you want you have to remember it comes from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus it will enter the axilla it is going to be posterior to the third part of the axillary artery then it comes here it is going to enter the quadrangular space it is going to wind around the surgical neck of the humerus and it is accompanied by posterior circumflex humeral artery in the quadrangular space it is going to divide into anterior and posterior division anterior division supplies deltoid and posterior division supplies teres minor okay and anterior division also supplies skin over this lateral aspect of the arm and posterior division ends as a pseudo ganglia clear a very short and sweet course branches as i have already discussed few branches first muscular branches will be deltoid and teres minor remember this is a very important thing anterior division supplies deltoid posterior division supplies teres minor articular or sorry the cutaneous branches will be here the anterior division which supplies the skin over the lateral aspect of the shoulder joint and articular branches which will be supplying the shoulder joint okay that is those are the branches and last part is applied anatomy applied anatomy is the same applied anatomy for the deltoid that whenever you are going to give intramuscular injection of the deltoid they should be given at the insertion of the deltoid to avoid injury to the axillary nerve because if there is going to be injury to the axillary nerve it can cause paralysis of the deltoid and the second thing is that surgical neck of the humerus is called surgical neck because the axillary nerve is going to wind around that surgical neck of the humerus and fractures of the surgical neck of the humerus are run with the possibility of damaging the axillary nerve which is going to supply the deltoid okay so this is a very short and sweet topic two short notes in one video i have talked please observe watch the videos like the videos and subscribe to my channel thank you